Hey everyone, it's Laurie from Quick Scrap Craft, and today's process video is for the October Off the Board Hop. This is a hop that's hosted by Crystal from Pineapple Papers, and it happens on the last Wednesday of every month. And basically, a bunch of scrapbookers just pick something from our Pinterest boards. Everybody does something different, but we show you how we are inspired by the pins that we've pinned. And hopefully it inspires you to go on onto your Pinterest boards and find something to inspire you in your scrapbooking today too. If you wanna find out more about this hop, check out the description box below, and you'll also find a playlist and a full list of everyone who's participating so that you can hop along and see what everyone is doing today. What I'm doing today is actually a pin that I have done before. I don't think I did it for an off the board, but I'm pretty, but I know, I don't, maybe I did a process video for it. Now I can't even remember. However, so my, my idea for this month was just to randomly pick something. So I opened up my scrapbook slash cards Pinterest board and I just blindly scrolled for, I don't know, a certain count, maybe a count of 30 seconds, I don't know. And wherever I ended up was where I ended up and whatever I blindly touched with the cursor is what I was gonna do. And it just so happened that it was a, a, a sketch, or not a sketch, a layout that I have done before, but I thought, you know what? It's kinda, it was a nice one, and it's kinda fun to try things in a different way, uh, do it again, you know, uh, I like the design. So basically, it was also a great way to get three photos on a page. And I happen to have three photos. These are still photos from back in December when we went to Arlington National Cemetery in uh, Washington, D.C., and I have been putting off scrapbooking them because I haven't really known what to do, trying to keep things respectful um, because they are cemetery pictures. So I don't want to break out, you know, Chamel main character energy with the bright colors and stuff and be like, yeah, Arlington, people died and are buried here. Woohoo. That's not what I was going for. So I saw this sketch or I saw, it wasn't... <laughs> I keep saying it's a sketch. It's actually a, it was a layout, but it didn't have photos in it. So it was like a suggested layout from, I think, Chris's creative uh, something. You'll see it. It's going to be up in the corner. You'll see what it looks like. Anyway, so it's got three photos. I have three photos. And I went through my paper stash, mainly the papers that I got from the Paper Issues Warehouse box that I purchased in the summer. And I found all these florals. And I said, you know what? These could actually go really well together. And because they're florals, it's got like a soft look to it. And I think it's appropriate for these photos. So I'm taking a sort of black, black and gray, big floral print for the 12 by 12 background. And then on top of that is a strip of a pink and gray floral, not from the same manufacturers. All of these are pretty much different manufacturers, but it's really nice to see how well they can kind of go together. Then I took four other pattern papers and I cut squares in them from four and a half, down to four and a half by four and a half squares. Um, they were originally 12 by 12. I think the last time I did this, I used six by six paper pads to make those squares. And I'm not sure what size I made them the last time. I might have done like a four by four because I'm pretty sure I didn't have paper going off the page like I do now. But I kind of liked the off the page look. There's my daughter handing me the scissors because she was actually trying to use them to like cut a doll's hair. And I'm like, these are the only scissors I have and I need them and I'm filming right now. Thank you. Anyway, so you could do a six by six paper pad or um, they, they make smaller ones too, um, just as an easy way to use them. Or you could take paper scraps and just cut to whatever size you can with those scraps. I probably should have done paper scraps, but because I was looking for very specific patterns with these florals, I went for full 12 by 12 pages. So now I have a lot of scraps to scrapbook with. And Next week, I'm going to do a layout made with entirely scraps, as I do at the end of every month. And as I do every Tuesday, there'll be process videos coming up in November and some challenge yourself, other like scrapbook hops and challenges for process videos coming up in, in November. So be sure that you are subscribed to the channel if you haven't yet already so you don't miss out on all of those things. And... Give this video a thumbs up like if you are enjoying watching it. And once again, don't forget to hop along with everyone else who's playing today because there's lots of great inspiration. It's really interesting to see what everybody chooses as their inspiration. Sometimes it's a sketch. Sometimes it's a scrapbook page. Sometimes it's a mood board. Sometimes it's like a piece of art. 
you know, you never know. You never know what might inspire you to sit down at your craft space and just start creating. So I've got three photos on here and four squares kind of on a diagonal in the background. The photos, one of them is a four by six horizontal. One of them I cut down to four by four square. And the other one I cut down to, I think a three and a half by three and a half square. And I'm gonna mat that on that sort of goldish pattern paper. I, I actually think it's like a movie theater marquee. I think that's old Heidi Swap. Um, but I don't, I didn't want the movie theater marquee. But I liked sort of just the color in the background peeking out. And I think I actually end up matting all three of these photos onto that pattern paper. So they start, the photos start off one size and then obviously with the matting, they're gonna be a slightly bigger. I didn't measure the matting. I just, you can see there, I'm kind of just hand cutting and whatever happens, happens. And then I'm going to uh, line them up so that I've got those two on top. And then the four by six photo is gonna be on the bottom, but nothing is like super lined up. Like the four by six photo you're gonna see, I'm not taking it and putting putting it directly underneath that four by four photo. Everything's kind of offset a little bit. And then for even something different, I'm gonna pop up the smaller picture um, on foam squares, just for some extra added dimension. You know, I like doing that. And because it's a, a photo and not something smaller, I'm gonna put a lot of photo dots for foam squares on here, just to make sure that like, sometimes if you don't get it in the center, the photo can kind of like bend down and it, it looks it looks like, hey, there's nothing underneath there. So uh, I like to have my, my pop-ups be very sturdy and, um, yeah, and so that's a photo, I guess I should tell you more specifically what these photos are. That's a photo of um, Ruth Bader Ginsburg's headstone. She shares it with her husband. The photo that I'm working on right now is of the, um, well, just some of the some of the gravestones that are there. I mean, if you walk around, there's just rows and rows and rows of these white headstones. And at the time, because it was Christmas time, they had they all had wreaths on them. There's an organization called I think it's Wreaths Across America, where they lay Christmas wreaths on the headstones of military personnel who have died. And then the bottom one is the Eternal Flame with JFK and Jackie Kennedy. So I kept that one big because you can't. I couldn't really cut it down. I wanted to be able to see both of the the gravestones as well as the flame. The other ones were very easy to cut down to size. Um, and now it's time for some embellishments. Now here's the part where it kind of gets tricky because I'm just using random pattern papers. This is not part of a collection, so I don't have any embellishments that actually go with any of these papers. Luckily, there were some floral pieces in the main character energy collection, and I thought they were not like bright and um, not as bright and like, woo woo. I, I know that's not a good description, but they were florals, okay? And they just looked like florals. So I thought they would be perfect for this. So that's what I went with. I also threw in a little sticker from, or a few stickers that have flowers on them from a Doodlebug Designs collection that was in my embellishment stash. And then I'm gonna do some journaling on those little tabby banner things that are also part of the main character energy collection. Um, and I'm just kind of looking through some of the other pieces that I have. I like where, I like the clusters that I have so far. So I'm just gonna start sticking those down. That sticker, which is the Doodlebug sticker, is gonna get popped up on some foam squares because again, I like dimension. I have dimension with the photo. I wanna have some more dimension toward the bottom of the page as well. And then the other Doodlebug stickers, they are those, um, what are, what is that called? an ellipse, but like the fancy one, <laughs> maybe? No, it's not an ellipse. What is it? Oh my gosh. Well, let me know down in the comments below what the word is that I'm looking for because they're brackets, but isn't there a better word for that? The fancy brackets. I don't know. Anyway, um, so I've got one on the bottom and then I'm doing one at the top. Again, because these are on a diagonal. So you you see that cluster, the embellishments there that I'm working with, those are at the top left. We kind of go down to the bottom right for the other embellishment cluster. I love working on diagonals. And then um, I'm just gonna add those pieces down there so I can, you know, I, I wanted to get I wanted to get down 
all the pieces that I liked so that I could go back and say, all right, where do I need some extras and where can I build out on this? Where can I do the title for this? And the title I'm keeping really simple. I'm using some Pink Fresh Alphas that I purchased from Not Just For Boys Kit Club. And I'm just going to spell out the word Arlington because... I don't want to do anything cutesy. These are, again, photos of graves. Like, we don't need cute. We don't need clever. We just need, what is this? Tell, tell the story of what this is. So I'm going to end up putting the title down at the bottom, which is not where, it, it's Chris's creative life. That's where this pin came from. Um, but that's not where she had hers. Basically, I mimicked the background and sort of the photo placement but kind of everything else I just went with however worked for me. And you can do the same thing. You don't have to do a, a scrapbook lift exactly the way it is originally done. You can if you have the right pieces and you know the exact measurements of the photos and everything. You can do it exactly the same way. Or you can just kind of like do your own thing or say, I like this aspect of that, so I'm going to do that, but then I'm going to change up everything else. Or I want to be, I want to rotate the whole thing and do it that way. There's lots of different ways that you can interpret a scrap lift, um, interpret a sketch. So I hope that if you are not used to working with scrap lifts and sketches, um, if you have a lot of stuff on your Pinterest boards that you haven't done anything with, I hope that today's hop just kind of shows you that there are lots of different ways to interpret something and that you can really just get creative and and let it let these guide you. Um, so yeah, let me know if you have any questions about what you're watching, what you're seeing. The close-ups are going to follow in just a second. And once again, I hope that this video was inspiring for you and that you come back to the channel and watch more of my process videos. Again, hit that subscribe button, give this video a like, and let me know down in the comments that you were here. Thanks so much for watching all the way to the end, and I will see you guys next time. Happy scrapping!